Evil Dead Trap is a J-horror slasher film directed by Toshiharu Ikeda. After a late night news reporter receives a snuff tape, she and her team decide to investigate its origins. The tape leads them to an abandoned warehouse full of booby traps. Hey guys, welcome back to Garage Slasherthon, where every day for the month of October we revisit a slasher movie. Apologies in advance if there's like a, a weird little noise in the background. That's actually my computer, it's about to overheat. I'm rendering a video as I record this video. Terrible idea. Just listen what it sounds like. This baby's working hard. By the way, this movie has nothing to do with Evil Dead. Sorry for the people who looked up Evil Dead on YouTube and came across Evil Dead Trap. I think they just wanted to capitalize on the success of the Evil Dead movies. Nonetheless, I watched this movie because I heard it has one of the biggest what the fuck endings of all time. I tried to look up as much as I could on this movie. It's a relatively unknown movie. I found a few critic reviews and all of them said, really good movie. But what was that fucking ending? Like, it really ruined the whole movie. Everyone said, great movie up until the third act. That was pretty unanimous. Am I any different? Well, you'll find out. Basically, the only thing this has in common with Evil Dead is these tracking shots, like the POV shots that are in Evil Dead make a return in this movie. That's about it. <laughs> and they're done for a different reason. It's like done for like weird transitions. When the movie starts, you you get exposed to the snuff tape and they heavily edit it so that you're not watching the whole snuff tape, but you get like bits and pieces of it. And it's a really freaky moment. And right there I was hooked. I was like, this movie's got me. What are the critics talking about? This movie's got me already. It's got me in its stranglehold. It was like a clever way of like showing you the snuff tape, making you feel what it's like watching this snuff tape without really showing you the snuff tape. You get little glimpses, but then you get these weird filters and these strange artistic decisions, and it kind of just confuses you and makes you a little anxious. Uh, it was really well done. It kind of felt like an MTV ad. It was kind of goofy, but it, it really worked in the movie. And then there's that eyeball slitting scene right at the beginning. which is reminiscent of uh, Un Chien Andalou by Dali, which we talked about on this channel before. But anyway, this movie is a really good homage, in the beginning anyway, we'll get into the third act. Starts off as a really good homage to Jalo movies. Like I said, there's that eyeball ripping scene or slicing, and every time I see eyeball horror, I see Jalo movies because they do that a lot, especially opera by Dario Argento, and the music itself feels very giallo. This movie does have that kind of giallo feel to it. Which is interesting because uh, you're seeing like a Japanese movie pay tribute to an Italian movie. That's what uh, movies are all about. It's all about borrowing different stuff from different filmmakers. Uh, I'm not one for segregating the cultures. I like it when people borrow from other people and turn it into like a melting pot of everything. And this does feel like a precursor to the Saw movies because it's about a slasher who's planting these kind of booby traps all around. Kind of feels like you're next in some regard. But there's one scene where there's a crossbow that's tied to a door and a character is about to walk into the door and you're just waiting for the crossbow to fire into someone else.
And that reminded me of Saw 2. There's a scene in Saw 2 where the guy goes to open the door, but it pulls the trigger of a gun and it shoots him in the face. So it's really interesting how this is a precursor to Saw. But it's weird, I wouldn't call Saw a slasher movie, although it could be considered one. But I would consider this a slasher movie because while all these traps are going on, you have this slasher who's going around witnessing them and stabbing them and stuff like that. There's also a really graphic rape scene which I feel like was a bit unnecessary in the movie. It kind of felt a bit exploitative, if I do say so myself. I don't like seeing on-screen rape. Just two things I don't like in my movies, poop and rape. Uh, I'm a very normal individual when it comes to that, I guess. Guys, if you want to make a movie and recommend it to Garage Movie Club, just make sure it doesn't have poop or rape. But poop when it's funny is okay. It's just when they do it for disgusting, like Solo. Nah, I don't like poop. Thankfully, just, this movie just has the rape, so we're good. But speaking of things that get under your skin, there's a lot of creepy crawlies in this movie, if that's something you don't like. The first act is so good for this movie because it has like all those kind of elements I feel like get under people's skin. A lot of people say they don't like eyeball horror, you get eyeball horror. A lot of people say they don't like bugs, you get bugs. Rape, you get rape. It's just like the most disgusting movie in the first act possible. It is Japanese after all. The Japanese people are some of the most depraved people and I'm just judging them based on their movie output. They make some of the most depraved depressing, disgusting, disturbing movies out there. You look up any top 10 most disturbing movie list, chances are there's gonna be a, at least 50% Japanese. No wonder why their suicide rate is so high. Japanese people should probably stop making movies about utterly depraved shit. Maybe they'll start feeling a little better. But what do I know, I'm just a pasty white guy. So yeah, I was really invested in the first half of the movie. It's a great mystery. You're on the edge of your seat. You just want to know who made this snuff tape, who sent it to the reporter, why did they send it to the reporter, do they have some kind of sexual fetish, uh, what's going on in this madhouse. The deaths are gruesome. One death where there's like spears coming out of the ground and it's just turning this girl into like a, a human shish kebab or something like that. <laughs> It was a really good death, like I said, the crossbow death was really good, really gruesome, really disturbing stuff, uh, really got under my skin, and, but it, gore, it's not just gore for gore's sake, it's like, it, there's a good mystery to it, and there's this kind of good dilemma between the protagonist and what's going on. The protagonist is someone who's obsessed with celebrities, she's a very vain character, and meanwhile she's confronted by real danger for once. It's not some kind of fabricated news story. It's an actual disturbing event and her vanity is causing the death of her friends. So yeah, it was like a really investing first half. What the fuck happens in this movie? Okay, journalist goes around trying to find who sent the snuff tape. Fairly grounded movie. You got some over-the-top kills here and there, but that's about it. Then you're introduced to this character who says he's been living in this warehouse for a while. He's been hiding out there, uh, dodging the murders. Then we find out he has a brother and he has a weird relationship with his brother. They're kind of estranged, but they're kind of close, he says. Obviously, he's the killer. That's not where the movie loses me. Where the movie loses me is this. I think they were trying to do a play on Psycho. So in Psycho, the guy had like a dual personality where half of the time it was Norman Bates and the other half it was his mother. Um, this movie puts a twist on that. A nice little subversion. Everyone loves a good subversion, right? No, not me, because this subversion is straight up out of nowhere. 
So it turns out he doesn't quite have a dual personality in this movie. Not quite, no. Turns out his brother is conjoined, fused to him. One brother is normal and the other one is just a fetus who is fucking attached to this guy. And he's in his stomach and uh, throughout the movie, this guy is always complaining about heart problems. Yeah, it turns out that's his heart problem. He has a fucking human being wielded to his chest. And the little human being is uh, controlling everything. It's kind of like the ending of uh, the James Gunn Scooby-Doo. So uh, Rowan Atkinson is the bad guy in that movie. But turns out Rowan Atkinson is just a machine. And he's being controlled inside by Scrappy-Doo. That's what it reminded me of. Totally out of nowhere. It's a fairly grounded movie. All of a sudden, a fetus is controlling the killer, the slasher, of this film. Why the fuck is that the ending? And then uh, once the big brother dies, the little fetus brother is just like, Oh, you killed my brother. I'm out for revenge. The umbilical cord is like flying everywhere. The kid is like jumping on walls like he's fucking Yoda in the Star Wars prequels. And he's just terrorizing the news reporter. And I was like, why is this in the movie? It was so good. Why did they have to go the goofy route? Maybe it's because the title wanted to be like Evil Dead. Maybe they were going for a campier vibe. But Evil Dead is a campy movie through and through. Especially Evil Dead 2. This started off as a grounded kind of murder movie. Uh, maybe some Jalo elements, a few elements from the Evil Dead movies, but then the ending is just fucking batshit crazy. Yeah, that's it. And then at the end, she defeats the fetus. Uh, the fetus dies, and then uh, it kind of has like the Nightmare on Elm Street end, where you think everything is fine until oh, Freddy Krueger shows up, psych, and they do the psych out at the end. Turns out the fetus impregnated the news reporter. So the news reporter thinks all is fine. She goes back to work and all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, fetus! <laughs> they didn't introduce the element of the fetus until like, 30 minutes before the movie finished. We went an hour thinking that this movie takes place relatively in the real world. And all of a sudden you introduce supernatural elements. I wouldn't be this upset if the first half wasn't so good. That first half is amazing. And then it just... And guys, I love my campiness in my movies. Don't get me wrong. I like a good campy horror movie. But don't just do the tone shift like that. It just doesn't work. <sighs> yeah. Evil Dead Trap. Did you watch it? I spoiled it. I'm sorry. I just had to get it off my chest. But comment below if you watched it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.